Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to our Atlanta Falcons news. And remember video here on a Monday, week one of the preseason. Last week, week two coming up later on this week. Let's jump in to the latest Atlanta Falcons news and rumors and begin honestly with some good news. And you Falcon fans, past couple of years, you need some good news, especially regarding the injury situation surrounding wide receiver Drake London. So, of course, as you saw, we talked about in the first preseason game last week, Drake London, he makes the opening drive catch. It's 24 yards. It's like, oh my gosh. And then he limps off. And then we get the, it's a knee injury. And then it's like, oh my gosh, you know, could it be season ending? Well, the initial reports too are that have come out are suggesting that London's knee injury does not appear to be serious. And again, we're days removed from the actual injury. And so if it was a torn ACL, right, if it was something very serious, we would know. And so the reports are essentially saying it's not serious. We don't know exactly what it is. At least I have not seen anything online saying here's exactly what's going on. Could just be a strain, could just be a tweak, but right now, at least we know it is not a serious injury. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to be back on the football field anytime soon. Odds are he won't practice for at least this week. The team is non-committal that he will play in another preseason game. I'd be surprised if he does. Maybe get him into the third preseason game, but let's just be officially clear here. He's not going to play in their second preseason game a little bit later on this week, but again, it's not season ending it's not month to month he should be good to go for week one uh in the opener against the saints Thakaholic had a really good write-up on this situation after uh, a press conference by Arthur Smith over the weekend. We'll throw that up on your screen right now. Quote, Josh Kendall at the Athletic reports that London's injury is not something that's going to impact the upcoming season. While our own Will McFadden reports Arthur Smith has not given much of an update on the timeline beyond that, it's probably safe to say that London's playing time in preseason, if there, if there is any remaining, will be quite limited. End quote. Honestly, this is a huge relief for the Atlanta Falcons. As you look at their wide receiver depth chart, we think about the wide receivers on this football team. They're not that great. It's probably one of their thinnest overall roster uh, positions, despite the fact they brought in a lot of undrafted free agents, traded for Brian Edwards. Like, they've tried to improve it, but overall, it's nothing special, nothing to write home about. And so your best receiver on that football team was hopefully going to be Drake London this year. And if you were to lose Drake London, what is already seen as probably a lost year, you know, at least a year where you're not going to go to the postseason unless everybody balls out. Without London, you'd for sure be a very bad football team. But if London's able to play, which he should be able to, if he's able to be healthy, we can expect a lot from this young rookie. And you saw that in the opening drive catch. His ability to go ahead and separate, run across the middle of the field, make a big play for 24 yards is not anything to be taken lightly. He is a massive part of what they want to do offensively. And if he's going to be healthy for the season versus being missed for a couple of games, that is a massive, massive win for the Atlanta Falcons. So good news for you guys here on a Monday. He will be good to go for the start of the regular season based on everything we have seen. Obviously, it'll be a day-to-day, -day, week to week thing when you actually see him back out on the practice field doing, you know, full content stuff. We played another preseason game. That is unknown. But the good news is it is not a serious long-term knee injury for London. Now, let me get a little ad break pin comment down below. How excited are you to see Drake Drake London play in 2022? I'm super pumped. I was wondering, you know, how good can a rookie wide receiver actually be? I think he's going to be pretty special this year. I'm at probably an 8 or a 9 in terms of my skill of 1 to 10. Give me your thoughts down below right now. I want to move over to a Twitter topic conversation that happened a lot over the weekend, and that has to do with the fact that Drake London, sorry, sorry Desmond Ritter, Drake London, Desmond Ritter, looked really good in his preseason opener against the Detroit Lions. The two passing touchdowns, the first of which was fantastic, then the game winner later on in the football game. There's now this idea that Mariota could be losing his job sooner rather than later. And again, Falcons Twitter, I took this topic to storm. I talked, I commented it on my personal Twitter account. It does feel like the idea that Mariota is going to play an entire season might be dwindling just a little bit. And I'll give you an example of Twitter kind of going off on this. Des Bryant, of all people, who is very active on Twitter, the former Cowboy wide receiver, he was outspoken after watching Ritter play one football game with the Atlanta Falcons. And he said this, quote, Ritter is going to be dangerous as he builds through his career. Whenever his game matches his confidence, he's going to be a problem. It's all part of the process. And it was that confidence that I talked about in my post-game reaction last Saturday morning where I said that despite the fact he missed a couple of throws and the overall completion percentage wasn't that great, the numbers aren't bad. And it really, if you watch the actual performance with your eyes, you can now find it on YouTube. They throw the highlights up there, of course. He looks so calm, right? It's very rare for a rookie quarterback to look super calm in his very first game. I know it's a preseason game. We can only take so much from it, but... He looked really, really good. And so now it starts to kind of give me the question, and a lot of people on Twitter the question, how long can you keep him on the bench? Now, we're not saying that he's instantly ready to go right now based on one, you know, performance against the Detroit Lions backup and third string guys. I'm not saying that. But if this continues to be the Desmond Ritter that we see over the next couple of weeks here as you go through game two and game three of the preseason, you start to kind of wonder, what if Marcus Mariota starts to 
stumble by week three? What if Mariota's looking rough by week five? What if the Falcons have lost more games than they've won by week seven, right? How long are you really going to keep this guy on the bench? I like Marcus Mariota. I think that he's provided something that the Falcons have not had offensively with Matt Ryan most notably mobility, but if he's not anything special in terms of winning and losing, and Ritter gives you kind of the same performance, and they're very similar in terms of their overall build and play style, why not just get the rookie in there, you know, week seven, and let him ride out the rest of the season, which will already most likely be a lost cause by that point, because you're thinking about, you know, wins and losses versus going to the playoffs and stuff like that. Give him something to build off of going into year two, and then he's a starter all throughout camp in year two, and then maybe you have a breakout year two season, which is what we've seen a lot from the younger, better rookie quarterbacks in the National Football League. Again, I am I am in on Mariota starting week one. I'm not saying I've changed on that, but I'm just letting you know Falcon fans are starting to kind of shift on this one and the idea that you give an entire, you know, bench year for Desmond Ritter, you let him redshirt his first year the way he, he can learn, that idea might die, especially if he continues to look as good as he did in the week uh, the preseason week one performance against the Detroit Lions. Do you think Ritter will start some point this year? You think he will type Y number low for yes? I think he won't go ahead and type N number low for no. I, I think he's most likely going to uh, play at some point this year. The question is just how early. Okay, there is no question that you should go ahead and jump on our hat and t-shirt combo right now. That is 40% off at chatsports.com forward slash Falcons combo. You see the link on your screen. It's like below me right now. We'll throw it down in the description box as well. Don't worry about that. But you pick up the great hat, great t-shirt that you see right now, the combo, as they say, uh, for 40% off. That's almost 50% off, basically. I mean, I see it's 50, but really it's technically 40%. Either way, a great chance to get some fresh Falcon gear because you know you're going to want to rep it when you go to that Falcon game up there uh, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium or just repping it at home, you know, the, the, the cul-de-sac barbecue, whatever it is. Just pick up your Falcons gear right now. Link is down below in the description box. Before we go ahead and get into roster cuts, which are coming tomorrow, your first five, I think, are going to come tomorrow, make sure you guys subscribe. We're going to break down every single roster cut that takes place uh, tomorrow. Sometime we're going to release a video looking at the uh, 85 guys who made the cut, the five guys who are let go. Probably a lot of undrafted free agents, not a lot of surprise cuts coming tomorrow. That's for later on this month. But just be, 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 be in mind that we're going to go ahead and do roster cuts very, very soon. So go ahead and subscribe down below for plenty more content just like this uh, on our Falcons Today channel. All right, as I mentioned, roster cuts are coming tomorrow. They will go down to 85 players, meaning you're going to get about five cuts. So we're going to break that all down. We're going to have a full video on it tomorrow, but I just want to kind of preface that don't expect the surprise cuts tomorrow. Don't expect those bubble guys to be let go. They still need you know, bodies for camp. They need bodies for preseason games. And so it'll be the guys who never really had a chance, but you're allowed to bring in 90 players anyway. And so here are the 90 players, right? You gotta get, you kind of get my point. It's not going to be any surprise cuts. And so just stay tuned for that because that's going to be uh, coming up tomorrow. Our final story of the day comes via the NFL's top 100 as voted on by players and coaches. The top 100 is a little bit strange. You know, Kyle Pitts, although did make it, he went in at 91 in the NFL top 100. It's always funny to look at how players are ranked because you never know what position is valued more, right? You think an offensive lineman is super valued, then they're like 90th. Then you think, you know, a wide receiver is not that valued, then they're like, you know, 17th. It's just weird how it varies. But Pitts did make it as a rookie. That shows some good news for him coming up. Hopefully he's way up higher uh, in year two. The one touchdown last year was the big disappointment. He should have had a lot more than that. I think he's going to be utilized a lot, 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 lot more here in 2022. But he did make the an appearance. Very rarely does a rookie do it uh, in the NFL Top 100. How about this? I like seeing Cordell Patterson, our hybrid, you know, Swiss Army knife as, as, uh, of a weapon uh, on, on offense, 73 overall in the NFL Top 100. I respect that pair that Patterson's gotten from a lot of people in the league after doing very little, you know, throughout his entire career as a journeyman return guy, hybrid wide receiver, maybe a little bit of jet sweeps. I mean, he's completely revitalized his career with Arthur Smith, and it's no wonder he turned down a lot more money elsewhere to stay in Atlanta because... I think he likes what Smith is doing, and he believes in what they're able to go ahead and accomplish here in the ATL, and I hope he's able to build off of what he did last year. I think he'll be a high fantasy draft pick for a lot of people in their fantasy football leagues, and my hope is that he lives up to the hype and he can continue to compound on what was an incredible 2021. How many Falcons do you guys think will be in the top 100 next year? I think we're probably going to see... I mean, is there going to be another Falcon? A.J. Terrell will, will, will make the list probably a lot higher up. But other than A.J. Terrell, I don't see any more Falcons going ahead and making the top 100. But how about next year? Do you see, you know, three, four, five? Overall, how many Falcons will make the top 100? Let me know down below right now. Right, as we go ahead and end, if you minute to the end of the video, type real one down below in the comments section. If you're a real Falcon fan, you're a fan of this channel, you watch the entire video, we appreciate that. Go down below and type real one uh, so we can see who the real Falcon fans are of the 7,000 plus of you that follow the channel. 
Okay, make sure you guys follow me on my personal Twitter account, at RealThomasMotts, where I handle all of my, my own tweets. So if you guys want to follow me there, go ahead and give me a follow. I tweet a lot of Falcon stuff, especially during training camp, a.k.a. right now. And as I mentioned, as we go ahead and end today, be sure to subscribe for plenty more great content, including cuts that are coming up and maybe another preseason preview for their Week 2 preseason game. For Atlanta Falcons today, I am Thomas Mott. We are out of time. We sign off. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.